Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I'm here today at the West Shore Sportsman's Association on a rare sunny day uh, for 2018 here in central Pennsylvania. And I'm going to be tackling a subject today that I get a lot of requests on, uh, which is cleaning a muzzle-loading rifle. And the reason I haven't done a video on it is because it's really so simple. I've, I figured that you would just figure it out on your own. Uh, this may not be that interesting, but I get so many requests for it, I decided to do it. So, I'm out here at the range today to sight in this, this replica of Edward Marshall's rifle. And I like to clean my guns at the range, if I'm at a range session, a black powder gun. So, after I'm done sighting it in, I'll show you how I clean it. Alright, before I get started, let me just say that there are some people in this world who believe that the way they do something... I mean, whether that thing is cleaning a rifle or frying an egg, they believe that the way they do it is the best way to do it, and that anybody who recommends any other way of doing it is a complete idiot and possibly a subversive communist. So let me just make it clear, I am not one of those people. What I'm going to show you is the way that I do it, and it works well for me. And I'm not going to say it's the best way, but it's the way I've done it for like 30 or 40 years, and it works. And if you don't like it, or if you do it some other way, or if you're one of these guys who has an arcane formula, you know, with simple green and, and three different kinds of shrunken heads in it, and it works for you, that's great. I don't care. And if you're the kind that always takes a barrel off and soaks it in a tub of water or whatever, I don't care as long as it works for you. What I'm going to show you is what works for me and use it if you want to or don't, no skin off my nose. All right, so here we are, the gun's fired, it's time to clean it. Now, I'm gonna show you really my basic technique, but I'm also gonna show you what I would do if I was in an event uh, or out in the field. So, here at the range, and I like to clean at the range, I've got a range rod, and of course it takes, you know, these jag tips, right? So this is, in this case, a 58 caliber jag tip to match this particular gun. And that's what I like to clean with when I'm at the range. Very simple. Now, when I'm in the field, this gun has a very traditional ramrod. It does not have a threaded ramrod tip. And the way I clean it is I've got this kit, Ted Cash. It's a fire starting kit, but okay, so in here I've got a jag in case I've got a rod that'll take patches and I'll borrow one if I can. Alright, this is my oiler, so it's full of ballastol oil. Alright that I can put where I need it, when I need it. Fifty-eight caliber ball puller, just in case. Some tow. All right, and then this tip. And what this does, this thing looks like a piece of spring. It fits on the end of the ramrod. Okay, and that's what you wrap the tow around to clean it. Now if I'm going to use tow with a threaded ramrod tip like this, I would use this tow worm that screws in. Okay, so let's show you how we do this. Okay, right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the lock off of the gun. Now I know guys who will take the springs out of the lock uh, I don't do that occasionally in the shop, but generally I find that I do not have to. Okay, so now the lock should come right off. Alright, now I clean with a mixture of ballastol and water. Right, so ballastol is a water soluble oil. I mix it one part ballastol to ten parts of water. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this lock up. 
All right, so I'm going to pull out the full cock. I want to be able to get in everywhere. And I'm just going to spray it. Every inch of it, and I'm going to let that sit. All right, while a lock is sitting, I'm going to take a, a patch that I wet down with ballastol and water. And I'm going to clean this area off right in here. All, right, all around the breach. Now, when the water evaporates, the ballast all provides a little bit of rust, a little bit of rust proofing. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't have ballast all, you can do this with plain water. I mean, some people use all these elaborate concoctions to take care of this stuff. Uh, you know, they'll use Murphy's oil soap in the water or simple grain or whatever. And you can use that stuff. I mean, it doesn't hurt at all. It works just fine. But uh, it's not really that necessary. All right, so I'm going to take the lock. And I'm going to clean all the surfaces off on this lock. I'm just going to get in everywhere. Right. Make sure you get underneath the frizzin. Now when I go home, I'll go over the lock again and get in all the nooks and crannies that I might have missed doing this. But generally this will get it quite clean. And uh, you really should be good to go. But just get all the fouling off of it. All right. So wipe it all down with a good patch. And I'm going to clean it off completely in a few minutes. I'm going to let it sit and dry for a little bit. And you can see that's dried off a bit. Okay, for the next step, I fitted the ramrod tip with the scraper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that down the bore to the face of the breech plug. And I'm going to dig that around and just kind of scrape that face of the breech plug. And I got a little bit of crap on there. That's what we would expect. All right, now I'm going to try to show you what this does. So we'll see. How well I can do this. I'm going to shake it. Okay. You see that in my hand? That's what came off of the face of the breech plug. So I like to get that cleared off and have a good clean breech plug face for going forward. Okay, now I always do this if I'm cleaning in the field. See, I got that toe worm and I'm getting a ball of toe on. I don't always do it at the range, but uh, it is actually, I think, the most effective way to clean a gun, so I'm going to show you. So I'm using the regular wiping stick. I, I could have put this on my threaded uh, range rod, but I'm going to take my ballast all. I'm going to soak this down good and wet. And the reason I like using toe is because it really gets into every nook and cranny and scrapes it clean. All right, so I'm going to send this down into the bore. And one thing I like is it really does get the breech plug face pretty clean if you do it sloppy wet like I do. Okay, so here's your toe after it came out. I'm using Swiss, which is a fairly low, low fouling powder, so this isn't too bad at all. Okay, now I could do this entire thing just with toe, uh, but I usually don't unless I'm in the field. So I'm going to get another hack of toe out. This will be a dry one. And you can skip this whole toe part if you don't have toe or you don't want to do it. I just find it's quite effective and therefore I do it. But if I'm feeling lazy, I don't. Okay, so I could just run toe down the bore like this. I'm going to do it twice and let it dry out. And the ballast all in that water ballast all mix will actually protect the bore. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over my lock with it. 
right? Just like, just like I did with the patch. And this toe is fairly abrasive, so it gets things clean very well. All right, so that's all set. I'll oil it before putting it back on. I'm just going to put it aside. All right, so that's it with toe. Now, I could do one more hack. That one's pretty clear. I'm not going to bother, though. Uh, if you didn't want to use toe, I'm going to show you the jag method. Okay, so let's say that you don't want to use toe, you don't have toe, you don't like using toe, it's too messy, blah, blah, blah. Well, no big deal. So what, what you're going to do is you're going to take a cloth patch. Oops. Spray it down with uh, ballast oil and water, get it good and wet. Okay, so this is a 58 caliber gun, so I have a 58 caliber jag. Get that good soaking wet patch. By the way, the wind is coming up, so all of my stuff is blown off. Now, I like using a range rod because it's got, you know, this collar here to protect the muzzle. I'm just going to run that down. And get it good and wet and clean it out. Okay, so because... Because I just cleaned it with a toe, I don't have much on here. If I hadn't already done that, obviously this patch would be filthy, but because I did, it's not filthy. So now I'm going to get some dry patches, I'm going to start swabbing the bore out. And in order to do that, i got to go gather them up off the range where they just blew away. Alright, hopefully I can get this done before the wind blows all my stuff away. Alright, so we just went down the bore with a wet patch, ballasol and water. Now I'm just going to take dry patches. which are blowing right off of the table. And I'm just going to go, it might take me uh, two or three to come up with a clean dry patch. So this one's not yet clean or dry. Well, it's clean, but it's not dry. So we just keep going. It really should not take many. But uh, now this is Swiss, like I said, Swiss doesn't foul much. If you're using, say, Schutzen or Graphs uh, or go you're going to be pulling out a lot more fouling generally than you are with this. I'm just going to reverse this and send it back down. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I got uh, a clean, dry patch. All right, so last step is I'll take a, a damp patch. And I'll just go over the entire barrel with it. I want to make sure that we just neutralize any of the fouling residue that is left over on the barrel. All right, so go over that, and you can see I'm going to pick up some. All right, getting a little, a little bit on there. So after that, I'll go over it with uh, with dry patches. Sure, we're all dry here. Take the lock one last time around. Make sure I'm dry. Dry and clean. Alright, so I'll take my pure ballast all and I'm just gonna a couple of drops right there. And a drop right there. Okay, so now we're good to go. Lower the cock, put her back in. All right, now I'm going to tighten the screws up and we'll be good to go. All right, and that's it. Got a nice clean gun.